it's official. I've lost my marbles. The warp has overtaken me. The chaos gods have seized my thoughts. Slanesh has wrapped her tendrils around... Wait, she's a snake. It was a furry in 40k. The space wolves have infected me with their fur-loving musk. Truthfully, I've wanted to do a Pokemon run for a while. There were some other run ideas, but like a good sellout, I chose the one I thought would bring the most views. The rules are simple. Only use furry anthropomorphic Pokemon. If they look furry and humanoid, they're good. If they're just an electric cat, they're food. If they evolve into an anthropomorphic furry Pokemon, they are also allowed. Now, I could use a randomizer to just give me a fuzzy friend, but I prefer to play unmodded when possible. With well, the only other options being a turtle and a penguin, Chimchar is the closest I can get to a proper furry starter. Wait, do apes even have fur? Apparently so. After a riveting battle with my rival, my loving mother, who has just heard her son nearly got himself killed by the way, tells me to go on and get. On the way to Jubilife, I hunt for more friends. Ordinarily, I'd gladly take a Shinx, but the Luxbray line is just fancy-looking cats. To the zoo it goes. Badoof is an odd one. Beavers can already stand on two legs, but Bee Barrel is kind of... maybe? Humanized? Uh, I'll put it in the zoo for now. Later that night, I had a dream. The great Badoof himself descended from the heavens. My child, what do you see? A beaver. A man. I am all. I am Badoof. On the team it goes. Jubilife's pretty boring, so I'll skip to Orberg. After evolving Sasquatch and Doris, I get Mock Punch and Water Gun to deal with Rourke's Brocks. Also, I completely forgot about Abra. It may not look it, but Kadabra does have a furry stash. No Alakazam, though, the Wi Fi's been shut down for years. Also, I don't have friends. Heading to Eternal City, I get Buizel, a speedy otter-type Pokemon. Now, I probably shouldn't use it because of Bee Barrel and the impending Grass Gym, but... I name her Dobarchu, King of the Otters. Anywho, next it's on to the Valley Windworks. Team Galactic is stealing energy and holding a hostage. Now, the reasonable response would be to contact the authorities, but logic and reason are for nerds. Stacking around the various grunts, I meet the first galactic commander, Mars, goddess of war. She sends out Zubat, which falls before Bee Barrel's rolling power, though not before getting a toxic off. Her ace for ugly comes out next, who's faster than a jet, apparently. Anywho, Sasquatch and her trade mock punches and scratches. The ape comes out on top, and the team galactic flees. Entering a turn of forest, I get Cheryl this backup, letting me grind my team while she heals. Also, is Chansey furry? Regardless, I have a far greater prize. Not a little punny, Batman. Now there's only one name fitting enough for a Baneri in this run. After grinding up my team near Mount Coronet, I find a Cleffa. Does the Clefable line have fur? There's too many team members right now, so I name her Anya and stick her in the orphanage. Whoops, forgot that Cleffa was male. Nevertheless, Anya is a fine name for a boy. For Eterna's gym, Sasquatch and Renard sweep our foes easily. Gardenia isn't much worse. Turtwig and Cherim are pretty forgettable. While I intend for Renard to beat Roserade, Sasquatch ends up saving the day. After getting cut, I exercise some hairless ghosts, then storm the Galactic HQ. There's a trap which I spring for free XP. Jupiter Zubat falls to Reynard while her skunt tank bodies my entire team until it dies. Cynthia offers me an egg, but the Togepi line doesn't have fur, I don't think, so to the zoo it goes. After saving Mira, which gives me a rare double Kadabra battle, I get the Earthquake TM in Wayward Cave. I'll need it for Volkner since a third of my team is water type. Along the way, Dobarchu becomes a true king, granting me a counter to the ghost type gym. Now, I could get an Eevee from Babe, but none of the evolutions are humanoid, fan art be damned, not even Vaporeon, so to the zoo it goes. Since Lola needs high friendship to reach her final form, I take her for a walk in Amity Square. The Art Ohm Gym's gimmick is magic doors. I need to find a symbol in the dark and go through the corresponding door to advance. With a mix of Dobar, Doris, and Sasquatch, I banish these furthest phantoms. The fight with Fantina is mostly straightforward. Duskull pulls all the tricks, burns, future sight, healing. Turns out spirits are no match for rocks. Doris lures out Miss Magius, who has magical leaf. 
Despite the risk, Dobar lands a near Oko. I swap in Sasquatch to take a second Magic Leaf, but get hit with Shadow Ball. After the ape falls, Dobar revenge kills with Aqua Jet. This leaves Haunter, who falls to a single Psybeam. Before leaving for Veilstone, Sane Man again tries to reason with me. But I see through the lies of the Jedi. His lead Staravia presents trouble with Intimidate and Double Team, but a lucky crit brings it down. Afterwards, the rest of the fight is easy, aside from Lola struggling against Daffy. I head off to Veilstone and on the way get some milk. The local gym is full of swole fighting types, which is perfect for Renard. Gym leader Maylene leads with Metatite, which goes down to Dobar's Aqua Jet. Then her ace Lucario joins the fray. I see she is a woman of culture as well. Sasquatch comes out and the two trade blows, with flame wheels clashing with force bombs. Despite the paralysis, fire wins out and her machoke goes down to a single psi beam. Mind over matter, as the nerds would say. Afterwards, Dawn needs some help and we beat up some grunts outside the Galactic HQ. Looker and I give chase, but the door is locked. Rather than get a warrant or something reasonable, we just kind of give up. Also, the HM flies here, but none of my Pokemon have wings. <laughs> Next up is Pastoria. Sane Man bars my way to the water gym, but we know how this song and dance goes by now. Intimidate only cuts physical attacks, so Renard gives the early bird the worm. Doris drives off Rapidash with a water gun, drawing out Roselia. After barbecuing the rose, Dobarchu has it out with Pimplup, munching on the flightless fool. Finally, Rapidash is doused and Sane Man runs off, succumbing to his own delusions. The gym requires me to step on a bunch of buttons to raise or lower water levels as I head to crash her wake. While I lack any good counters to water types aside from Grass Knot, they also aren't super dangerous when I have two swimmers on the team. Wake's lead is Gyarados, which I put to bed with Doris's mighty breath. My plan is to use Rollout to sweep his entire team, but sadly, Doris misses her third rock, forcing me to give it another go. The dragon wakes up, hits me with a waterfall, but through divine intervention, the beaver is still standing. Her final rollout fills the beast, leading to a clash of otters. Dobar's first crunch gets the defense drop, letting me beat Crasher's Floatzel. Finally, Quagsire falls to a single grass knot. At long last, my girls can learn to swim. Also, kaboom! A galactic grunt just committed a blatant act of scaryism by bombing the Great Marsh, but I guess no one cares that much? Cynthia's right there. He's right there! Get him, Cynthia! Rather than apprehend the grunt like a reasonable person, Cynthia asked me to give a necklace to her grandmother. The road to Celestic Town is shrouded in mystery. And fog. Lots and lots of fog. This makes everyone's attacks miss, which makes my life even more miserable. Thankfully, I do get Sasquatch to evolve, giving me good ol' Infernape in close combat. While visiting the cave, Granny C tells me about the lake Pokemon, which can apparently balance out either the Master of Time or Master of Space, but not as Cyrus figures, both at once. Rather than leave like a reasonable person, he tries to destroy the painting. He's clearly not a man of culture, so I challenge him. His lead is Sneasel, which is four times weak to fighting. Despite his confusion, Reynard fells the goal bat, which leaves Dobar Tube against Murkrow- <coughs> Sasquatch against Murkrow. Evidently, the ape wins, and I get the HM surf. Cynthia shows up, and despite growing concern, still doesn't take Team Galactic seriously. Girl, they literally threatened to bomb your hometown. In her defense, they've also been getting their butts handed to them by a literal child, so maybe she's got a point there. On the way to Candleave, I get Lola to her final form. At Candleave, Sane Man attempts to bar my path. <laughs> oh, Barry, you sweet summer child. You can't stop me. No one can. Heading to Iron Island for the Strength HM, I meet Riley, whose ace is also Lucario, a fellow man of culture as well. After beating up more trainers, we drive galactic grunts from the mines. Riley gives me a Rioluig, which will be my final team member. I mean, there's also Weavile as an option, but we'll see, we'll see. The Steel-type gym is pretty easy. Sasquatch and Lola make short work of the trainers, and Byron isn't much different. Lola takes out Magneton and puts on a good showing for Steelix. Sasquatch nearly takes out Steelix, but falls to an earthquake. Doris revenge kills, and then I stall against Mastiodon until I get Sasquatch back in. He breaks the shield, and I head to the library. Fun fact, in the Japanese version of Platinum, Pokemon and humans apparently married each other. <laughs> Rowan wants me, Don, and Sane Man to go to the lakes to study the Pokemon. Suddenly, kaboom. Rather than let the authorities investigate, Rowan still sends me to Lake Valor. Surprise, surprise, Team Galactic's here. By detonating a bomb, they force the lake trio out of hiding. 
I run into Commander Saturn who has an interesting haircut. His lead is Golbat, which I forgot about, so I send Sasquatch against it. He gets poisoned, but the Golbat gets burnt, and the ape takes the kick. Thankfully, Saturn's ace is Toxic Rogue, who's four times weak to headaches. After sending Doris out to stall with sleep shenanigans, I test out Rollout on the floating disc for fun. It doesn't go so well, so I go back to healing Sasquatch. I reflexively quit close combat, which drops defense and special defense. Then I choose Shadow Claw, hoping for a crit. Apparently, my monkey brain forgot about Flame Wheel, which actually does something to Steel types, ending the fight. Regardless, they've taken Azelf and are also at the other two lakes. At Lake Verity, I run past Rowan kicking butt and beat up more grunts. Dawn failed as per usual, so I fight Mars again. This time, I remember to lead with Renard, taking out the Golbat. Then it's Rabbit versus Cat, Leg Day versus Arm Day, and Leg Day wins with Satchwatch barbecuing Bronzor. Regardless, Mesprit was captured. Despite Galactic being a full-blown criminal organization, Rowan still wants me to check on Sane Man. The road to Snowpoint is long and slow. Along the way, I have the option to switch a teammate out for Sneasel. As useful as Doris and Dobarchu have been, I don't know if I need two water types, and Weavile has higher speed. The wheel says no. Running into Maylene, who's just visiting Candace, hmm, I head into the snowstorm. Eventually, I find the Rock Climb HM and get spell tag from this woman, who... Anyways, after reaching the city, Riolu hatches. He's not a raccoon, but he's got the mask and the colors, so I name him Sly Cooper. He's only level 1, but thankfully all these high-level ice trainers are perfect for getting him to snuff. The biggest challenge in the gym is remembering how the sliding puzzle works. It's been over 10 years, and I still have trouble with it. Anywho, Candace's team has two big dangers, Obama Snow and Frostlass. Obama Snow's snow warning immediately calls up a hailstorm, which Frostlass can use with Snow Cloak to raise evasion and hail. You add in Double Team and Blizzard, which has 100% accuracy in hail, and you've got a rough fight. Thankfully, she leads with Sneasel, which is four times weak to fists. This brings out Pilaswine, which nearly okos Renard, but falls to a couple of grass knots. Renard lures out Frostlass early, depriving her of Snowcloak and ensuring Blizzard has low accuracy. My designated Ghostbuster, Dobarchu, fells her with a single crunch. For Obama Snow, I bring out Lola, who nearly takes him out, but falls to Avalanche. Thankfully, Candace heals, letting me revive the bunny for the XP and win with Sasquatch. At Lake Acuity, Sane Man failed as per usual. Now, I could easily stop Jupiter, but, uh, what? She gets to leave? Okay. The Lake Pokemon are all in Galactic HQ. They're not furry, so I have no use for them. However, Team Galactic aims to make a world without spirit, which likely involves removing all deviants, and that includes furries. This won't do. Along the way, I also evolve Sly into Lucario. After infiltrating the basement, I sneak into the headquarters and confront Cyrus. He leads with Sneasel, who falls to feet. Renard deals with Crobat. Sadly, I forgot about Honchcrow's Insomnia, but luck out with Rock Climb confusing it. Then I decide to try my hand with Rollout, which never works, so I finish it off with Dobar Surf. Cyrus nopes out, and I head to the labs. Saturn demands with a rematch, and I oblige by beating Golbat with a rabbit. Renard gives Kermit another headache, and Sasquatch beats Bronzor. The commander leaves, and I let the lake Pokemon go free. <laughs> The Masters of Time and Space are of no interest to me. However, Cyrus's team only has one furry humanoid. Does that sound like a man who'd include furries in his perfect world? The journey is long and the grunts are many, but I reach the top. Mars and Jupiter tell me not to interfere, so naturally, I interfere. Thankfully, Sane Man joins me, sending out Munchlax, a furry humanoid. The commanders lead with Bronzors, who set up Reflect and Light Screen to drag things out. For whatever reason, they use Extrasensory on Munchlax instead of Sasquatch, though they fix that mistake next turn. Munchlax falls quickly to Skunt Tank, and I pull a close combat in revenge. Unfortunately, he thick, and Golbat makes the ape. For whatever reason, Sane Man sends out Heracross against a flying type. After some beetle barbecue, Dobar, Chew, and Star Raptor deploy. After wailing a bit on Skunt Tank, I bank on the bird tanking a surf, knocking out Jupiter's ace. Star Raptor sacks itself with a takedown on Golbat, then Rapidash and Perugly jump in. A Fire Blast scorches the final bat, but a Shadow Claw knocks out Renard, so Lola and Rapidash take out the Fat Cat. Then Cyrus summons Dialga, Master of Time, and Palkia, Master of Space, to make the world not furry. The Lake Boys show up, but can't stop both Dialga and Palkia. Thankfully, Garatina can, dragging Cyrus into its home dimension. 
Cynthia gets back from the library and reveals Garatina was the third master, a master of distortion. In its rage, it forgot to close the door, which could destroy both our world and its home. This includes all furries, so we enter. After some rock puzzles, Cyrus challenges me to a final duel. He leads with Houndoom, which falls to close combat. I gave the monkey in to take Intimidate and maybe get a crit with Shadow Claw. Nope. Then Lola takes charge. With a bounce and some returns, she just barely brings down the beast. Aunt grows out next and I paralyze it with bounce. After Lola goes down, I bring out Doors for some rollout action. She flattens the crow and nearly Oko's Weavile but falls to X Scissor. Sly gets a chance to shine, breaking the Weavile with a close combat. The battle ends with Renard giving Crobat a headache, driving Cyrus off. There's one last problem, Uratina. Since Pokemon don't speak human, we can't just tell them to chill. Cynthia suggests either beating it or capturing it. Now Giratina doesn't have fur, so the second option is out. There's also the third option of running away, but I need the XP, so it's murder time. Giratina's strong, sporting ominous wind, shadow force, ancient power, and dragon claw. Half of these don't affect the bunny. I also forgot that return doesn't affect Giratina, but bounce thankfully does. After some jumping shenanigans, I bring Dobar out for a crunch and switch in Lola to nullify Shadow Force. The Master of Shadows falls to one last bounce, and the day is saved. Sunny Shore's up next. Now this is usually the point in the game where I get bored and stop playing, like, Imagine if the MCU didn't end with Thanos. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. Alas, the run must go on. Flint of the Elite Four asks for help with Volkner, the electric gym leader, with his depression. Rather than suggest something sensible like therapy, he wants a literal child to beat him into feeling better. Sounds pretty good. My ace for the gym is Sly Cooper, who I give Earthquake to bury my foes. The fight with Volkner is a bit more complicated. Jolteon pulls some Thunder Wave shenanigans, forcing Sly to full restore. This is immediately wasted by Raichu's Focus Blast, though the fat rat gets flat. Then, Sasquatch takes out Luxray with some close combat. And finally, Renard takes out Electivire with a Grass Knot and Psych- uh, Lola Revenge kills Electivire. This cures Volkner's depression and lets me get Waterfall for Doris. Afterwards, I do some backtracking to get Dobar Ice Punch and Sly Dragon Pulse. Gotta have counters ready for a, uh, certain dragon type later. Victory Road! I hate Victory Road. Why are all the Pokemon so underleveled? Anywho, after spending an eternity buffing my team up, I feed them drugs and move on. Time for the League. Before challenging the Elite Four, Sane Man tries one last time to get me to see reason. But reason and logic are for fools. I answer to a higher power now. His pathetic team gives little challenge, save for Empoleon, who gives Doris a bit of a fight. Nevertheless, he's sent packing and I surge ahead. First up is Aaron, the Bug-type Specialist. His lead is Yan Mega with Double Team and Speed Boost, so y'all know I gotta take him out fast. Thankfully, Dobar Chew's Ice Punch brings it down quickly. Aragross is up next and a bounce from Lola knocks it out. Then Vespa Queen gets squashed by Doris' rollout. Afterwards, Scizor falls to a Flame Wheel from Sasquatch. And finally, Drapion is taken out by Sly's Earthquake. Next up is Bertha, or Granny Ground-type. Ordinarily, she gives me a bit of trouble due to my chronic aversion to grass or ice types every time I play this game, but thankfully, that's not an issue here. Two grass knots from Renard deal with Whiskash. Hippowdon comes out and Doris comes in, and waterfalls bring it down. Gliscor is next, but a flying scorpion bat is no match for ice cubes. Afterwards, in comes the golem. I keep Dobar in to weaken it, but only trigger the full restore, so I revenge kill with Renard. Finally, Rhyperior is toppled with another Grass Knot. Flint's up next. Fun fact, in Diamond and Pearl, there were only two Sinnoh fire types available, Infernape and Rapidash. So Flint also had a Steelix, Drifflim, and Lopunny. I see you were a man of culture as well. Anywho, his Platinum lead is Houndoom, which dies when I sneeze on it. Then his Infernape gets a headache from Psychic. Larion gets felled by Waterfall and Doris comes close to knocking out Rapidash, but it sets up Sunny Day and beats the Beaver with a Flare Blitz. Dobar finishes with a Surf, but falls to Magmortar's Thunderbolt. So I fight fire with the... fighting, punching the big duck to death. Lucian the Psychic is the final Elite Four member. His lead is Mr. Mime, which dies to Crunch. Then Alakazam falls to Crunch. Glade puts an end to the munching, but Sasquatch just barely beats it with Shadow Claw. Espeon continues the trend of mind readers being weak to biting, though Bronzong proves too much to stomach for my brave otter. Thankfully, a giant bell is no match for a fire monkey. Finally, Champion Cynthia awaits. She leads with Spiritomb, so I lead with Doris to do some Sleep and Swords Dance shenanigans. Unfortunately, 108 spirits don't rest easy, so Sly only gets two dances off before earthquaking up to Lucario. I see you are a woman of culture as well. Next up is Erase Garchomp. 
His monster is essentially the final boss of Platinum, sporting few weaknesses and high stats. Sadly, the Land Shark pulls an Uno Reverse card and Sly falls to an Earthquake, but Dobar rises in its place. <laughs> Dobar proceeds to sweep half of Cynthia's team, trading Ice Punch for Dragon Rush, the Queen of the Seas, Bells, the Great Garchomp, Wilt's Roserade, and barely survives the Water Pulse to take out Togekiss. With Melotic left, I try winning with Grass Knot. Nope. Still, most of my team is left, so I get cocky and start messing around with Lola and Doris. This doesn't go so well, so I send Sasquatch to finish things with a close combat. The Serpent falls, and with it, the challenge. I take my rightful place as the Fur Champ of Sinnoh and prove that, yes, you can indeed beat Pokemon Platinum as a furry. Well, that was fun. Happy April Fools. For any of my subscribers, I am very sorry you had to watch that. For any newcomers, I don't usually play Pokemon for my vids. It's mostly strategy games like StarCraft or Dawn of War. If that sounds interesting, feel free to sub. If this video does well, I'd be more open to doing unhinged, out-of-genre challenges like this in the future. If you want to fund my insanity, I have a Patreon, even just like $3 a month to enable my depravity. Anyway, shoutouts to Cladis Marino, Abby Ackridge, N. Tuong, Michael Phillips, and Mike Pierce for supporting the channel. Your taxpayer dollars have been put to good use this day. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and use cursed fetishes to defeat criminal organizations.